What do you know about it, Chigelski? What do any of us know about anything? Hey everyone, Jim Jag here. Welcome back. This will be a short post and I'll be doing it in a somewhat different format. So we'll see how uh, this one works out. Now I'm sure by now most of you have uh, seen this or read about this or whatever. Um, basically the, uh, the issue is that Oracle has, quote, lost interest in Java. Now, there were some kind of like uh, maybe inclinations that something strange was going on uh, a while ago. Uh, Oracle started dismissing their Java evangelists. And certainly that could be interpreted as, well, Java is successful. People are already using it. People know about it. There's really no reason to evangelize Java anymore. So let's dismiss the Java evangelists and put those, um, those resources, the money saved, and put that into Java development. But what we found out is that that's not the case at all. The reason why the Java evangelists were being let go is basically because Oracle is like, eh, about Java now. Uh, basically, they have no real interest in Java. It's either done its duty or it's uh, no longer uh, critical to Oracle and Oracle's uh, plans and their business models. And so basically, screw the community. Um, we're not worried about it anymore. Uh, we don't care about it anymore. And so there. Now, one of the hardest things to say is, I told you so. But really, there should be no reason that anyone is surprised by this, that anyone is, is shocked, that anyone can claim, you know what, I never saw this coming. I just did not read this in the tea leaves at all. All you have to look at for a clear example of how much Oracle cared about the, the Java community is the way they were treating the Apache Software Foundation. Um, back in 2010, uh, the ASF, after years and years of trying to uh, come to some sort of agreement, which basically meant Oracle abiding by the, uh, the signed JSPA uh, that was between Oracle and, and the ASF, which, allowed, which, would, which would have allowed the ASF to release a real open source version of Java, um, Oracle made it pretty clear that they didn't care about anything, even a signed legal agreement, if it meant them giving up some sort of dictatorial control of Java. No matter what the Java community process said, no matter what kind of impact or harm it would do to the Java community process, no matter what it did to a fellow executive committee member, which the ASF was, uh, Oracle made it clear, nope, sorry, um, what matters first and foremost is what we want, and the community can just stuff it if that's what it turns out to be. Now, certainly Oracle, I think, deserves some criticism for the way it's handled uh, Java and the way it's handled uh, other uh, situations and open source projects as well. But that really isn't completely fair because after all, Oracle is playing by the same playbook. It's following the example. It's continuing the long tradition that was actually started by Sun Microsystems. Now, when people think of Sun Microsystems, there are a couple things that usually pop into mind. Uh, some people think of Sun OS and Solaris, the operating system. Some people think of 
uh, Spark and the Spark architecture and the sunboxes and others think of like my SQL, my SQL and, um, and other things as well. But I think one thing is common among everyone who remembers and recalls my Sun Microsystems is their involvement with open source and that they were the uh, examples of how to do open source right. They were the real first true open source company. Now, one of the great things about 2020 hindsight is that the span of years uh, allows one to uh, objectively look over um, such uh, classifications and figure out what the true and honest legacy of a person or a company is. And so looking back over the legacy of Sun Microsystems as this uh, open source uh, leader, you have to think about it nowadays as, really? I mean, not really. They really don't deserve that. I mean, you know, the Java example is just one. You know, uh, Sun itself were, were the people who started the whole um, uh, issue between Java and the ASF. And Oracle simply uh, maintained the status quo as far as that was concerned. But uh, some were the ones who kind of like created the situation in, in the first place. And they were the ones who started the whole idea of them being first among equals. And that if it benefited Sun, then that's what was important. Uh, another great, um, well, not great example, but an example of how uh, Sun's reputation as open source experts is the whole open office, uh, Libre office debacle. Again, the, the source of this whole uh, issue, this whole debate, this whole community dysfunction can be and should be laid at the feet of Sun Microsystems. They were the ones who really started the whole idea of, again, ignoring the community, um, not really trusting the community, not abiding by the community or the community process. Uh, basically, open source in name only, open source in license only, and that's pretty much it. And there are other examples of, of that as well. So even though it's true that Oracle deserves uh, some criticism for the way it has uh, continued to handle some open source projects that they've inherited from the, uh, the Sun acquisition, and even though Oracle uh, really did have the opportunity to make things right, to make things better, to do the right thing, um, it certainly would have been ironic if Oracle was actually doing open source better than the so-called uh, open source expert company, Sun Microsystems. It would have been nice, but it really would have been strange if that would have happened. Um, but I think, in fact, seeing Oracle actually donate the open office suite to, uh, to Apache maybe was a step in that direction. It really was uh, something that Sun should have done, could have done. And if they had done it, then maybe the whole uh, division, the whole dysfunction between the various open office communities wouldn't have happened anymore. It'd be interesting to see what would happen. Um, unfortunately, the donation of open office to the ASF may be too little, too late. So nowadays, I think that we really do need a company or a handful of companies to really show how to work correctly with the open source communities out there. Uh, Sun is not the example to follow. And in my opinion, uh, their reputation of open source leadership, open source knowledge, um, open source 
uh, expertise is really unwarranted. And so I guess the main takeaway is that if you're a company looking to do right by open source, then there are a lot better examples of companies who are doing um, open source correctly and using some microsystems as an example really is a disservice. Now, in a later post, I will um, uh, note and describe what I think are some of the companies who are doing open source uh, or open source right, and those are the ones to, uh, to follow. But in general, I think the main takeaway is that as long as you're really honestly valuing the open source community, as long as you were really serious about working with the community instead of above the community, that really is a step in the right direction. And it's certainly better than Sun Microsystems did.